Imagine being adrift at sea for over a year. No land in sight, just endless waves and despair. This wasn't a Hollywood movie, it was the agonizing reality for Jose Salvador Alvarenga, who holds the unwanted record for the longest time a person has survived lost at sea, 438 days. But this isn't just a story of survival, it's a journey through the brutal Pacific Ocean, a battle against starvation, dehydration, and loneliness. Dive deeper with me as we explore the tale of Alvarenga, the man who defied all odds. To fully grasp the story and the suffering the man endured, we first need to understand the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean on the surface of the Earth, which almost occupies a third of its area. If we were to gather all the land on the planet and compare it to the Pacific Ocean, the ocean would still be vast, completely empty, except for scattered and dispersed islands everywhere. The likelihood of someone finding you if you get lost in it is almost nil, and that's what makes our story today even more astonishing and strange. The record that Alvarenga reached is 438 days, and it's likely that no one will break this record anytime soon because the probability of a person dying before breaking it is much higher. The journey that started all this suffering was supposed to be a simple two-day trip. Alvarenga wasn't alone by choice, usually a trusted friend weathered the unpredictable Pacific with him, but on this fateful day, luck intervened, keeping that friend safely ashore. Left scrambling, Alvarenga found a young, eager 23-year-old named Ezekiel Cordoba ready to fill the gap. On November 17, 2012, from their sun-drenched Mexican town of Costa Azul, they set sail into the vast Pacific. But their vessel, more like a bathtub compared to the ocean behemoth, this seven-meter open boat, devoid of a roof or even basic provisions, was ill-equipped for the coming storm, let alone the nightmare that awaited. Their arsenal, fishing tools, and a cooler, optimism, their only real shield. News of an approaching tempest hung heavy, yet the need to earn a living, a constant pressure in these coastal communities, pushed them onward. They ventured a hundred 120 kilometers from the safety of land, seeking the promise of a bountiful catch. But at 1 a.m., the storm roared in, its fury threatening to swallow their tiny boat whole. Panic surged, forcing them to throw most of their meager supplies, lightening the load just as their hopes began to sink. These tools, valuing thousands of dollars, and even the fish they had caught during this period were thrown into the sea to lighten the boat's weight, allowing them to move more easily and flexibly. At that time, they were six hours away from the coast and traveled through the storm at night in a desperate attempt to return to shore. By 7 a.m., they were only 24 kilometers from the coast and could even see the mountains on the horizon. Unfortunately, their luck was bad as the boat's engine suddenly failed and the boat had no other means of movement. No oars, no sails, nothing. The wind and the storm began to play with them again, slowly dragging them back into the ocean without any means of resistance. However, luckily, they had a radio through which they were able to communicate with their boss since they were close to the coast. They informed him of their situation and current location. The boss said he was coming as fast as he could and that he would inform the Coast Guard and the relevant authorities to join the search. Unfortunately, during their communication, the radio's battery died and suddenly their last hope disappeared. Imagine being in their place and suddenly losing the last means you had to communicate with the outside world. You are completely isolated at sea, the wind is pulling you away from the place you told them you could be found, and the land and mountains you could see are slowly disappearing from your eyes. I don't think anyone can imagine the despair and frustration they felt at that moment. Their boss acted quickly, and indeed went out with a group of fishermen to look for them, and even the Coast Guard mobilized their boats and planes to search for them. They continued to search for them for several days, but unfortunately, the winds had drifted their boat very far away. Within just five days, they were 450 kilometers from the coast. There was nothing around them but the ocean in every direction. Their boat was so small that it was almost impossible for people to see them from the sky. Even if a plane or helicopter passed over them, they had no way to call for help, no signal gun, not even a distinctive colored piece of cloth. They had no means to signal to people other than their hands, so they knew that the chance of being rescued was almost non-existent. Even with their supplies depleted and the lack of tools after they had thrown them away and their shattered morale, the instinct to survive made them try to adapt and cope with the situation in any way possible. For food, they were forced to catch fish and birds that came near their boat with their hands and eat them raw. They collected some plastic water bottles they found in the sea and used them to collect rainwater. However, there were long periods without rain, so they were forced to drink the blood of the turtles they caught. And also, sometimes, even their urine. God forbid, although drinking urine is supposed to be very harmful and not helpful at all, I don't know what one might do when facing circumstances like the ones they were in. I think anyone might reach that stage if they experienced what they did. 
Just imagine time passing by, day after day, month after month, and you are living in a small boat that is seven meters long with only one person you can talk to, and all you can do to entertain yourself is to catch fish. Naturally, all these circumstances would lead anyone to lose weight. According to Alvarenga's account, his companion, Cordoba, the young man with him, actually began to lose his mind after just four months. His mental state deteriorated severely, and he even started thinking about suicide. As days passed, his body became weaker and sicker, especially due to the raw food they were eating. Eventually, he reached a point where he could no longer eat this food and stopped eating altogether. His body became emaciated, and his illness worsened until he finally passed away just four months in. Alvarenga lost the only person who was with him. He was now alone, with still a long journey ahead. Not only did he face the problem of finding food and surviving, but the situation also became more psychologically exhausting. He had no one but himself for company. Imagine being in his place, all alone in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by water on all sides. I don't know what this man had to do to maintain his sanity during this period. Alvarenga was practically in the middle of the Pacific Ocean at this time, a place considered one of the most desolate in the world. Ships rarely pass through areas like this, but according to Alvarenga, he recounted that a cargo ship passed by him when he was alone. He screamed at them and gestured to them, and indeed, four people on the ship saw him and gestured back with their hands. However, the ship kept moving and didn't stop for him, nor did they acknowledge him further. Imagine his state of mind then, after being lost for months, suddenly seeing a ship feeling hopeful, thinking that finally there might be a chance to escape the hell he was in. All his hopes evaporated in a moment. Alvarenga said that he seriously thought about killing himself twice during the time he was lost. He said, I put the knife to my throat, and I was ready to slit it, but I was very afraid of death and the pain I would suffer. By then, 11 months had passed, and Alvarenga had traveled a distance of 8,000 kilometers on the small boat. His clothes were torn, and he had only a piece of cloth to protect himself from the sun. Still alone and lost in the middle of the vast ocean, he remained in this state for several more months until about 14 months had passed since he was lost. On that fateful day, Alvarenga noticed that there were floating coconut shells in the sea and an increased number of birds in the area, indicating that land or an island was near. It took about half a day until the features of the island became clearly visible. Indeed, he decided to jump from his boat and swim towards the island, thinking at first that it was an uninhabited island. However, he found a house on on it, sought help from the people there, and finally, after 438 days since he left his village, he made contact with another human being. After traveling about 11,000 kilometers, the island Alvarenga reached was named Abon Atoll, an island located before the Philippines by a distance. Had it not been for his luck that led him to this island, he most likely would not have seen land until reaching the Philippines, which was still more than 5,000 kilometers away from this island. It probably would have taken him more than an additional 240 days to reach it. After the news of his discovery spread, the authorities put him on a plane and returned him to his country after he had recovered. There was extensive media coverage, and Alvarenga decided to write a book to tell his story and the events that happened to him. But then, the family of the young man who was with him on the boat and died decided to sue him, accusing him of killing their son to eat him. By the way, this is a possibility because there are indeed stories about people who got lost and had to eat the people with them to survive. The psychological and physical state that people go through in these situations can enable them to do something like this, so it's actually a plausible possibility. Of course, he would deny something like this if he actually did it. But I don't think anyone can know for sure. What do you guys think? Do you believe he could have done it? Write to us in the comments below. That was our video for today. And before you go, please give us your lovely likes and don't forget to share as much as you can. Also, check out our other videos if you missed them. Thank you for following, and as always, keep the passion alive. See you in the next video. Goodbye.